Seafood, in my opinion, is the best food ever. It's healthy, it's fresh, it's delicious. Until I saw these pictures. Maybe you've also seen some recent documentaries on the fishing industry. If you didn't, this is the gist. We are at war with the oceans, and if we win this war, we're gonna lose it all because mankind is not able to live on this planet with the Dead Sea. Well, I got terrified. What have I done with all of the fish and chips and sushi and shrimps and oysters that I've eaten all along? Is there still any kind of seafood that I can eat without feeling like I'm responsible for destroying entire ecosystems? And which type should I just avoid in general? Well, it got so much messier than I thought it would. Do you see where it is? So overwhelming. Let me break it down for you. After the whole debate about meat and dairy farming and its consequences, seafood has come under greater scrutiny. Global production of seafood has quadrupled over the past 50 years. While artisanal and subsistence fishing used to be the norm, industrial grade wild capture has dominated over the past decades. The UN estimates a third of all seafood might be overfished. We're emptying the oceans at an alarming rate, and not only that, the way we fish endangers other marine animals and entire ecosystems. Seafood sustainability is a very touchy subject. Everybody I spoke to said, you know how complicated seafood is. But I found out there is some seafood you can eat with a relatively good conscience if you follow some rules of thumb. The first question you need to ask yourself if you're buying seafood is, is this species endangered or not? For some, it's super clear cut. So if you can avoid bluefin tuna in sushi restaurants and other places, please do. And the second is another species most commonly eaten in sushi, which is unagi. Um, there are many different species within that category, many different types of eel, but for the, for the, the vast majority of them, they are in bad straits and I recommend you do not eat them. That's Ryan Bigelow, who has been working for the database Seafood Watch for over 10 years. Greenpeace has a red list of fish, fish in the wild that are endangered. All the resources I mentioned, by the way, you can find in the description box below. This is quite a blanket list. If you want to dig into exactly which fish stock is endangered where, you can turn to databases for more precise information. One of the best known is the Seafood Watch program. It scientifically assesses and lists thousands of species and their sustainability status. Our recommendations are very, very specific to types of fisheries. How healthy is this population of this fish? If you're trying to catch, uh, if you're trying to catch a tuna, how many of those tuna are left? Are you catching sharks? Are you catching things you don't want? Um, are you impacting that natural environment? Are there rules in place to protect those species? But there is quite a bit of, of difference depending on how and where it's caught. So let's talk about how these fish are caught. Fishing methods using large industrial grade gear in marine environments often cause the most damage. Number one is bottom trawling, where huge nets, the height of buildings and the length of football fields scour the ocean floor, causing vast amounts of bycatch, catching and killing other non-target fish and endangered animals. This often happens when fishing for bottom dwelling fish like hake or flounder. It also harms seabeds. This is what the seabed looked like before and after bottom trawling. Number two is longline fishing, which targets big species like tuna or swordfish. These lines can be miles long and have thousands of hooks, causing, again, bycatch. Depending on where you live, you can get information on fishing methods on the packaging. So, of course, from a fishery sustainability point of view, we would absolutely uh, benefit from having more selective gear. This is Mina Epps, who is responsible for the protection of marine and polar environments at the IUCN and has previously worked for the Marine Stewardship Council. More selective means targeting the species you want more accurately, like rod and reel fishing, or harpooning, or cast nets. You can also use special hooks in long lining called circle hooks that don't immediately kill non-targeted fish or other marine animals. This doesn't mean that you can never eat fish that's caught with a long line. That's what the detailed seafood guides are for. 
It's just information that you can take into account when you want to eat big wild caught fish. So what about farmed fish like this salmon? Catching wild fish used to be the dominant way to get to fish. But aquaculture seafood production has recently overtaken wild catch, its growth accelerated mostly by farms in China, India and Indonesia. But farming big fish in open pens in marine environments has its own host of problems. Many farmed fish, like salmon, are mostly carnivores, meaning they need to be fed fish. Estimates vary, but around 10 to 20 percent of all wild-caught fish may have been used to feed farmed seafood. On top of that, if the fish farms are not managed well, pesticides, antibiotics, food waste, as well as fish excrement can poison the environment. The spread of diseases to and from wild populations, as well as parasites, are also major problems. But omnivorous fish like tilapia, carp, catfish or pangasius can, if managed well, be farmed more sustainably. They can eat plant-based feed and can be farmed in bigger ponds or lakes in a more natural environment. But sustainable management is still the exception in emerging and developing countries where aquaculture is concentrated. The most sustainable form of aquaculture is shellfish farming, like mussels, oysters or clams. They require little feed, filter the water and are very fast growing. So if you want to be on the safe side, that's the farmed seafood to go for. With one exception, farmed shrimp and prawn, a lot of which contributes massively to environmental degradation, not to mention social injustice. I know that large, a large percentage, if not most, shrimp is red rated and the industry has some serious problems. So one way we are told that we can make sure that the food we eat is not responsible for all of these problems is to look out for certifications. There's the Marine Stewardship Council label, MSC, long seen as the gold standard of sustainable wild caught seafood. Then there's the Aquaculture Stewardship Council label, ASC, or the Dolphin Safe Tuna label. Let's have a look at the MSC. It's the most widely accepted certification, covering about 15% of the market. This one's particularly interesting. So it has the MSC label, and it even says it's 100% sustainable, but it's caught with bottom trawling. How does that go together, basically? We don't consider only the gear type to determine whether or not sustainability is possible. Um, any fishery will have some level of impact. This is Michael Marriott, MSC Program Manager for Africa, Middle East and South Asia. The question is whether or not that impact can be managed within tolerable limits. The MSC looks at three principles. Whether the targeted stock is overfished, what impact the fishing has on the wider ecosystem and the strength of the fisheries management. But the MSC has seen criticism, for example, for certifying fisheries with a high percentage of bycatch. When uh, these fisheries have bycatch, uh, maybe they, they may need to report it, but they can just throw it overboard without anyone noticing. This is Frank Vajan, who co-authored a study on the controversy surrounding the Marine Stewardship Council. There have been observations that uh, several adopters did not scrupulously comply with MSC arrangements. We don't expect fisheries to have zero bycatch. I think that would be unrealistic for most, if not all, commercial fishing. Um, but MSC certified fisheries are expected to provide evidence that, they, that they're reducing, that they're mitigating their, their bycatch impacts. So that means if you have the MSC label, you can't always be sure it's really sustainable. But in more cases than not, it is better than a non-certified seafood at least if you're in the North American or European region. There are many regional labels that have good standards, but also labels that are given by the industry without any independent certification. So read up if you want to make sure they mean anything. Okay, I know this is a hell of a lot to process. Labels can be good, but they're not always. Food produced in aquaculture can be good, but not always. 
And to be honest, a lot of this information is quite hard to come by if you're an average consumer. Especially if you're not cooking from scratch. So here are some rules of thumb that the experts gave me. So if you want to minimize the kind of the, the impact or the pressure on the ocean, is also to diversify. It's, it's to eat from a, a you know broader palate. If you can be more adventurous in your in your seafood consumption, that's a good thing. If work some shellfish in your diet. Um, try a sustainable source of tilapia or another farm fish. Um, there's a lot of other good seafood out there, and we just have to expand our horizons. Eating smaller fish that repopulate faster, like anchovies, sardines, or small mackerels that are fished sustainably, rather than only eating the bigger fish, is a way to take some pressure off the bigger, popular species. Just asking, you know, also asking where your fish comes from, it actually shows that you care, whether you're in a restaurant or in a shop. When I go to a restaurant and they don't know, that's a red flag because you should know a little bit of information. If there is a good vegetarian option, go for that. If not, get the fish and do a little bit more research before you go out next time. See where he is or if there is aquaculture or where he comes or so. So they didn't know where the fish was from. They said the tuna may be bluefin tuna. So I stayed far away from that. Got something vegetarian. Very good. Sometimes sort of an unintended effect of uh, using standards could be that we think that, oh, sustainability has been covered, so I can eat as much as I like. But it surely should not be a sort of free ticket towards consuming as much as you would like to consume. Some suggest that the only way to go is to eat no seafood at all. And that is a powerful option. But it's not viable for vast parts of the world's population who rely on it for food security or for their income. The much bigger problem is the overconsumption of seafood in the global north. For those of us who are lucky enough to pick and choose, eating less seafood and caring more about where it comes from is a step in the right direction. So this whole story got so much more complicated than I thought it would. Did this help you decide what to eat? What else would you like to know about eating sustainably? Please let us know in the comments. We post videos like this every Friday.